Please pause the video, reread the problem before listening on. We can begin by enumerating some of the given values. So for example, the string tension is given. We symbolize string tension by using tau. So tau is equal to 3.6 newtons. We also have the so-called linear density. That is symbolized by mu. So we can say that mu is equal to 25 grams per meter. In part A, we are asked to find the amplitude of this wave. Now, we can find the amplitude by inspection because we know that the amplitude is measured from this sort of equilibrium position to the maximum vertical displacement. So that distance there is going to be our amplitude. We symbolize amplitude by Y sub M. Now, again, we can do this by inspection because we know that Y sub S is four centimeters. So that means each tick mark here is one centimeter. You would have one one centimeter, two centimeters, three centimeters, four centimeters right there for Y sub S, but then go one more tick mark up to five centimeters. That's going to give you the amplitude. So we can say the amplitude just by inspection is five centimeters. That is the correct answer to part A. For part B, we are asked to find the wavelength, and good news, we can actually solve that via inspection of the picture as well. For example, if we select this initial point right here, and then we kind of follow the wave as it travels along and find the corresponding point in the wave right there. So those two points correspond to one another. If we measure that horizontal length from one position to the corresponding position, we can see that that length is 40 centimeters. So all we need to do is inspect the diagram and we can comfortably say that the wavelength is equal to 40 centimeters. That's the correct answer to part B. In part C, we are asked to find the wave speed. And that we're actually going to have to calculate, but it's not too bad. We know that the wave speed is equal to the square root of the tension divided by the linear density. Now we have enumerated those values earlier, but let's just be careful because the linear density is given in a non-standard unit. It's given in grams per meter. We want kilograms per meter. So all we need to do is a little conversion here. We all know that one kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. So if we align the units in that fashion, the grams cancel out and we would get 0 0.025 kilograms per meter. So that's the value we're gonna plug in for the linear density. And then we have the tension tau given earlier. And after plugging in and simplifying, we get a wave speed exactly 12. And the standard unit of speed, of course, is meters per second. So that's the correct answer to part C. In part D, we are asked to find the period of the wave. And we know that the period is equal to one divided by the frequency, but we haven't calculated the frequency of this wave yet. We can do so by recalling that the speed of the wave is equal to the wavelength multiplied by the frequency. So if we divide both sides of that equation by the wavelength lambda, we would have speed over wavelength is equal to the frequency. And we have the speed and we have the wavelength. So we're going to take that expression and plug that in for F. And then the only thing to watch out for here when you're plugging in the numbers is that the lambda, the wavelength, was given to us in centimeters. Just scroll down the page here. We know that the lambda was 40 centimeters. Make sure you divide that by 100 to get it into meters. So that would be 0.4 meters. So also be careful about plugging that into your calculator. But when you do so, you would get 0 0.0333 approximately. And that is the period that is measured in seconds. And that is the correct answer to part D of the question. Next, we need to find in part E, the maximum transverse speed of a particle in the string. And we know that the maximum transverse speed is equivalent to the angular speed multiplied by the amplitude. And we haven't really figured out omega yet, but we can do so because we know that omega is equivalent to two pi times the frequency. So we can actually replace omega with two pi f. And then we haven't really calculated the frequency either, but we know that frequency is the reciprocal of period. If you look back at this equation right here, if you were to solve that for the frequency, you would get one over the period. So if we make a little bit of room here, we can make another substitution for the frequency, we're going to put in one over the period. And now we have all of these values, so we're able to now plug in to find the maximum transverse speed. 
So there are the values plugged in. When you compute this, you're going to get about 942. Dimensionally, we have centimeters per second. So that's a valid answer. If you need meters per second, just divide by 100. You get 9.42 meters per second as an equivalent answer. So moving on, it says, if the wave is of the form given by this lovely looking equation, we need to find next the value of k, which is the so-called angular wave number. So let's do that next. And we can do that by dividing two pi radians by the wavelength. We know the wavelength was 40 centimeters, but if we divide that by 100, we get 0.4 meters. So then computing that, we get about 15.7, and that's going to be in radians per meter. That is the correct answer to part F. In part G, we need to find omega. And you may recall earlier that we said omega is equal to two pi multiplied by the frequency F which also is 2 pi multiplied by 1 over the period. And of course, we have the period. We established that earlier, so now all we need to do is plug in the period. And when we compute that, we get 189 approximately, and this is going to be in radians per second. So this is the correct answer to part G. In H, we need the so-called phase angle. And to do that, we're going to be using the wave equation given in the question. Now, in order to use that effectively, we want to go back to the graph, which has somehow gotten pushed down here. There it is. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the initial point right there. Now, at that point there, we know that the time would equal zero, and then the value of y would equal that y sub s value which you may recall was four centimeters. And also looking at that point, we can see that the X value is also equal to zero centimeters. In addition, we know the amplitude Y sub M is five centimeters. So we're gonna take this value for the amplitude, this value for X and this value for Y and plug them in to the wave equation above. So there we have the values plugged in. I should have noted we were also plugging in zero for time. That was one of the values we listed earlier. Now this right here is that value of Y that we extracted from the graph. Remember at that initial point, the value of Y was four. So we're gonna put that right there. And in addition, the equation simplifies here because zero times K is zero and zero times omega is zero. So on the right side, you're just left with five times the sine of the phase angle. Now you can divide both sides of that equation by five. So you get 0.8 is equal to the sine of the phase angle. And then you would take the inverse sine of both sides of this equation. Make sure your calculator is set to radian mode. And when you do that, you're gonna get about 0.93 as the phase angle. So this would be the correct answer to part H of the equation. And then finally in part I, we need the correct choice of sine in front of omega. Sorry, the question got cut off there. So the correct choice of sign in front of omega. And this is not gonna to be too bad because the question noted at the very beginning that the wave is traveling in the negative direction of an X axis. So when you have a wave traveling in the negative direction of an X axis, then the sign for the omega term is actually going to be a positive sign. So it's kind of opposite perhaps to your intuition, but the correct answer for choice I is going to be a positive sign in front of omega because again, the wave is traveling in the negative direction of an x-axis.